speaker for today is a gentleman who I know to be a quiet person who is always smiling. But today that will change as he will inspire us with a beautiful message. Help me welcome Lawrence Saku. I was watching a princess movie with my goddaughter the other day. I don't quite remember the name right now. Quite honestly, the movie was watching me more than I was watching it. The movie's main character was a typical girl who discovered that her father was a king. She went to live with him. While, while my goddaughter was watching the movie, she asked me, why is she learning to sit like that? Why is she learning to walk like that? Why is she learning to talk like that? I responded, She's learning to act like a princess. Being a princess means she has to represent her royal family and kingdom. Her grandmother was teaching her how to carry herself because she's no royalty. People who know me know that I sit in thought quite often. Recently, this experience came into my consciousness and by reflex I related it to religious science. We're all from one source, God. As incarnations of one spirit, we represent the kingdom of God. We need to remember this all the time. We are royalty, and we should live our lives as such. Step confidently, be strong, fashionable of course, and always altruistic in our decisions. We are royalty. With that being said, I'm truly, truly honored and humbled to give my talk to such a regal congregation. Good morning, my beautiful temple family. And guests and to our listeners on the World Wide Web. If you could see you through my eyes, you're all looking awesome this morning. <laughs> the last time I spoke with you, the topic was, why I love this teaching. In summary, my response was, and still is, I love this teaching because it is infectious and makes everyone who comes in contact with it reach higher potentials. This teaching is something that I want to see grow and have others benefit from. I will quote Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science, when he says, it can be taught, it can be learned, and it can be consistently applied with a certainty of definite and repeatable results. I have lived this and I believe this. As you look around the temple today, you will see the youth out in their numbers. What we want is to have this be the norm at the temple. To achieve, to achieve this, we began to put much more focus on the youth arm of the church. We now have scheduled weekly Saturday meetings here at the temple at three. The strategy is to have a spiritual component to the meeting so that young adults can get blessed up on Saturday so they can participate more in the service on Sunday instead of leaving church and not being visible. All work and no play makes us Right. We'll have, a we'll have recreational activities to aid in building a strong bond as a group and share applications of lessons taught and learned. As part of this initiative, a structure is being put into place. So far, we have three positions. Please meet the leader of the youth group, Lauren Suku. Hello. <laughs> Second is Maya Johnson. I don't know where she is. Um, oh. And Zoe Sanders is our secretary. So, um, as with every new initiative, this is a work in progress and we'll keep you up to date on our activities. Advice is always welcome, so please feel free to reach out to any one of us. Oh, one last thing, fundraisers. To have the initiatives work, you know, we need funding. So we'll be having a fundraiser in the near future, and we know that we can count on you for your fullest support of our events. The, th the theme for today's service is happy. Have we been doing a good job so far? Yes. Great. The, th the theme today being happy, and then me being nominated as a speaker, is no coincidence. Why? Universe, not sleeping at all. I'll share where this is coming from. As Dickens wrote, 
It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was an age of wisdom, it was an age of foolishness. I won't go any further because you all know it. As you can see, it, is, it was pure madness going on. In my life recently, there have been some unexpected events that really rocked me to my core. Even though positive things were happening in my life, the negatives seemed to overpower them. It made me feel as if I have lived in a very cynical world. One even more so because I was coming from a place I did not expect. I'm very optimistic and always find the silver lining no matter how dark the cloud. To be in a position where I was down is not a place that I can say I've ever been in. I just felt like being alone, not going anywhere, not seeing anyone. You know them vibes there? Eh? Yeah. I knew where my consciousness should be, but it wasn't. Some work needed to be done. I was not happy. To find happiness, I had to know what I was looking for, right? Yeah. Meaning to what we're looking for to get to it. You're probably asking now what I was asking then. Dwayne alluded to that earlier. What is happiness? What is happiness? I can't say there's a definite answer to that question, as it varies from person to person. Some people would say it's money, some love, some wealth, some having a lot of friends, power, material things, playing video games, browsing the internet, you look all over the place, cell phones, shopping, I see everybody smiling, <laughs> and the list goes on. My simple definition of happiness is how satisfied you are with your life and how good you feel on a day-to-day -day basis. What I'll do today is share three lessons learned on my journey to personal happiness. I'm an IT professional. One of my functions is to identify problems and solve them. To accomplish this, I apply what I call going back to the basics. What I do is break a system down into its simpler, smaller components and work it back to its natural, natural operating state. I decided to apply this to my life, which inspired the title of my talk today, Back to the Basics. So the story begins. After service one Sunday, I was invited to the first youth meeting here on a Saturday. I made several attempts to decline, being polite and respectful, but the persistent Carmen Clark would not, would not have any of that. I attended the first meeting and then became a regular. A few meetings later, it was decided that we should form an executive body. Distancing myself from the conversation, hoping to be forgotten, I could not avoid it. It was inevitable. I found myself the leader of this group. Why did I have to be so charming and handsome, I thought to myself. <laughs> then the topic of Youth Sunday came up, and a speaker was needed. I don't think I need to go any further. If you can't figure out what happened, well, here I am. To attend the meetings in the first place was a task. Not because I didn't want to, but because, my, because of my psychic state. I had to do what I call now, um, fake it to make it. Even though I was not at my best, I acted, as, I acted as I was. Here was step one to my path of happiness. As a student of religious science, I went back to the basics of this discipline. What I'm referring to is a declaration of principles. The Declaration of Principles is usually found on the inside cover of the program. If you'd like a copy of them, you can see me anytime. I mean, I'll be glad to share it with you. Right? Back then, the one that resonated with me the most was, we believe that heaven is within us and that we experience it to the degree that we become consciousness of, conscious of it. Let me repeat it. We believe that heaven is within us and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. I'll break down for you what that means to me. Heaven is my consciousness. My consciousness refers to my inner state, which is driven by my thoughts and my feelings. My thoughts and my feelings 
set my in, you know, spiritual temperature. My spiritual temperature affects my intentions, and my intentions are released to the universe. Let me bear a mouthful for some of you, but you all following me? All right. It is very important that intentions are clear, because when released to the universe, law is going to act. We need to make the decision to invite in only positive thoughts and feelings and block, deny all negative thoughts and feelings from entering our consciousness. We are governed by what is in our consciousness, our consciousness that takes how we live our lives from day to day. Once an intention gets into our subconscious, your spirit is drawn towards it. it we will be led by our inner thoughts and not the external environment, thus bringing us to a happy state. In English, what I just said was, you don't have to wait on how you want to feel to come. You can just act the way you want to feel and it will happen. And there's step one, fake it to make it. I want to say, I'm faking it to make it, no, do I look nervous? <laughs> All right. One of my habits is surfing YouTube. You could say I'm a YouTube junkie. I find playlists of random stuff and let them run in the background as I work, play, exercise, study, whatever. I was recently reminded of this quote by Les Brown, and I quote, if life knocks you down, try to land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. And if you can get up, you can stand up. And if you can stand up, you can fight for your dream once again. You have something special. You have greatness within you. And it's not over until you win. Back to the basics. The Declaration of Principles, the one that resonated with me, was we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny. For we understand the life of all is God. This reminds me that we're all made of God substance, what I call God substance. This is very significant. This confirms that there is nothing we, can, we cannot do and there is nothing that we cannot achieve once we set our intention on it. We are great. We are greater than any obstacle that comes before us. Do you believe that? Yes. You really believe that? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it sounds like it now. I think you should remind your neighbors about that. Tell your neighbor that you are greater than any obstacle that comes before you. Okay, my 20 minute talk just went to 22 minutes. Thank you. In recent times, I found myself surrounded by a lot of kids. I've sat, back <laughs> I've sat back and observed them playing. I try to learn from all my experiences, no matter how trivial they may seem. Have you really taken in kids playing? Yeah. They have no concern in the world. They are full of confidence. They have nothing in them named fear at all. They are ready to take on any challenge or mango tree in the case of our Sunday school kids. <laughs> If a problem should come up, like falling and bruising a knee or elbow, being bitten by an insect, breaking a toy, losing a toy, there's a five minute pause, if so long, and then back to the business of fun. Obstacles have no chance of ruining playtime for a kid. The only objective is to enjoy themselves to the fullest and getting back to the business of being happy. As we get older, we tend to give the challenges of life more strength and influences, influence than we should. We need to remember that time in our life when we easily rolled with the punches and always found happiness. As human beings, the natural state for us to want to achieve is happiness. To help do that, I recommend getting in contact with your inner child. <clears throat> Sorry, getting out of contact with your inner child. Children live one day at a time. They make the most of each day. We used to do it. Why did some of us stop? With God's substance in us, there is no challenge too tall 
and none too wide for us to back from. The only limit that exists in this world are the limits that we set for ourselves. We're here for a purpose. We're, here, we're not here by accident. The universe did not make a mistake. It is our duty to find out what that purpose is. Once we find our pur purpose and we begin to work on it, we're automatically on the path to happiness. If we ignore it, it's my personal opinion, that we'll be doing an injustice to ourselves. There will be challenges, but that's a part of the journey. Edison, after making a light bulb, said, I did not fail. I've just found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. <laughs> we have all failed at some points in our lives. I personally don't look at them as failures. I look at them as lessons learned. I study them to make myself better and stronger. I'm a basketball fan. When I was younger, Michael Jordan was one of my favorite players. I idolize him to today because of what he has done. You all know Michael Jordan, right? OK, I don't have to. OK, good. <laughs> one of my favorite quotes from Michael Jordan is, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take a game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Yeah. Michael Jordan wrote his story, not letting his dif difficult lessons get him down. We can do the same. All men are made equal. We're, we all have our God substance. Let us start using it. The last, I, <clears throat> sorry. the last advice I will leave with you today needs no exp explanation. It's prayer. Pray. The universe is listening, the universe is waiting, and the universe wants to answer. In closing, what I did on my path to happiness was return to the basics by one, Faking it to make it, in summary, the frame, of mind, the frame of mind you put yourself in will eventually manifest in you. Two, reconnect with your inner child and use up your God substance. Life isn't that serious. Fear nothing on your way, climb the biggest, baddest mango tree, knowing there is no failure, just lessons to be learned. And three, treat or pray every day. I'm the proof you can ask the universe for anything, and you'll get it. Um, if you realize that the universe is taking a bit long to manifest, I must apologize. It's probably working on my request. I have quite a bit out there. <laughs> uh, my talk was quick and sweet. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you.